Welcome to Pentecost. Welcome to the United Methodists. For those of you who might be visitors, and we have several this morning, there is a bookmark in the pew. You may fill that out and put that part in the offering. Keep the bookmarks to yourself. If you do have prayer requests, please have uh, time to fill this out now. It will be picked up very shortly as we begin the prayer week. And also register your attendance in the red pew pads. So, I will finally sit down. Please prepare your hearts and minds for the presence of God as you listen to our prayer.
unite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ's risen. Amen. This is Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives. I do have to point out as an aside that this is also, to show you the importance of Pentecost in the life of the church, it's the only day we get chance to wear red. As a Purdue fan, it's very difficult for her, and he, I have to tell you, she has formally requested a black and gold day. Um, one of the ways that we celebrate that is through song. And I'm sure it will come as no surprise to me that the history teacher in me loves to learn about the history of songs and, and the meaning behind the lyrics. The next song has been part of the Methodist hymnal for many years. And as many times as I have sung it, until I started doing some research on the song, I honestly did not connect the song directly to the So, as you sing with us today, focus on the message of the lyrics of the spirit song. Join me.
day that we celebrate the birth of the church. And so it's especially beautiful on this day that we celebrate the life of this child as we baptize heaven. So now, I remind you is that as we go into this time of baptism, this is the time when we mechanize the chief and the time that, that we celebrate this birth, we celebrate what God has already done in the life of this child, what God will continue to do. And so we baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We baptize with water because water is significant because without water we have no life. But it's not the water that we celebrate because if, if the water was the importance, and that's where we sometimes get into these theological discussions, how much water is it pouring, is it emerging, is it sprinkling? Because it's not the water, it's the Holy Spirit, and what God has already done. And so I invite you to turn to the screen as we celebrate this baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. On behalf of the whole church, can I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, Promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture this child of Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Do you, as Christ's body, and I speak to you, congregation, the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Amen. We nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care. Amen. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds the rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. 
their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. This is where you see. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his first to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out the Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water to those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Giving me the eye all the time up to her. What are you about to do? That is the old thing. I better tell you my name and father. And other son. And then the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit worked with me in heaven. That he born to the water in your spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Now it's our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. To baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share our fellow person. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Moving to the household of God, I commend this child to your care and to your love. Do all in your power to increase your faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. God of all grace, to which call us to the glory of Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Members of the household of faith, I commend you your love and care of this child whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that this child may grow in the knowledge and love of God through our Savior Jesus Christ?
Not with women, just with men. <laughs> I can't. We'll give you a break any time you need. Now we got a couple of things for you. We like to stand over the center of the bathroom. We stand over for you to take home. To save it, to light it on her birthday, on her special day, to eat something. We also have a certificate of baptism. certain color in church today. If you look around, you see some people wearing it. You see some people from, from the front and around the walls. What color do you see? Um, red. You guys were not here last week, wasn't it? No, why do you think there's red everywhere today? Evan, why do you think there's red? <laughs> you know what? It's okay. Do you know what is red today, Evan? No? Well, there's a special Sunday today. It's called, what? The red, white, and blue. That's coming up soon, too, isn't it? Well, today is the first day, or today is Pentecost Sunday. Anyone know what that means? No, I don't think anyone might know what that means. Well, on the first Pentecost, after Jesus had gone to heaven, he promised to send, send the Holy Spirit to be with us. And the disciples, they had no idea what that was going to be like. And Jesus was gone, and they didn't know what to look for when he said he was going to send the Holy Spirit. Would you know what that looks like when Jesus would send the Holy Spirit? You think you might be a little bit scared if you didn't know what was coming? Do you ever get scared when you know something's coming, but you don't know what it's going to be like? Well, the disciples were scared too, but they stayed together and they prayed. Which is always a good thing to do when we're scared, isn't it? Well, Pentecost was a festival, so they were praying and missing Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit came, and it came like a big wind. Can you make a sound that might sound like a big wind? Go ahead. Like Elsa? Yep, just like Elsa. Can you make the sound? No one can make a big, big wind? That's a good one. I don't take a big sound like wind section. Well, and there were also flames dancing above their heads, but they didn't hurt anybody, though. Can you see the wind? Can you see the wind? No. No? Well, how do you know the wind's blowing? So you can see things moving like the wind is blowing? Well, that's like the Holy Spirit. Can you see the Holy Spirit in our church today? But can you feel the Holy Spirit in our church today? Yeah. Well, when the Holy Spirit came, it didn't just come and go away again. It came and it went everywhere. And like I said, the Holy Spirit's in church with us today. And it's moving, moving and talking to people, and it's moving here within us. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? 
Well, I know whenever some people get excited to do a cheer. Has anyone been learning to cheer this before? Have you ever seen any cheerleaders? At basketball games or football games? Have you seen cheerleaders? You are a cheerleader? Can you tell us what cheerleaders do? They have pom poms and they cheer. Well, we're not going to have pom poms today, but we're going to do a cheer. Now, I haven't been a cheerleader, but I've seen a lot of cheerleaders at basketball games when I was there. And there was a cheer that we used to do, and it sounded like this. It says, we've got spirit, yes we do. We've got spirit, how about you? And at a basketball game, it was, it was to see which crowd could do it the loudest. And they'd go back and forth and see who could do the loudest. So we're going to cheer for the Holy Spirit being in our church today. And we're going to have a competition against the congregation to see who can cheer louder. Think we could do it? So we're going to change the words. We're going to say, we've got Holy Spirit, yes we do. We've got Holy Spirit, how about you? Did we practice before we started? Can everyone say that? Ready? We've got Holy Spirit, yes we do. We've got Holy Spirit, how about you? All right, stand up. We're going to cheer for the Holy Spirit being us today. And then the congregation is going to cheer back.
Now, I know you can read, but we're going to have them tell you out of their own mouths um, what the next day they might be all about. And I'll say, gee, tell us who you are and what those visitors and, and what's going on. Uh, as a physics and Russian major. I'm Alec Babiak, and I will be working in the Shoot Shop property. Cody, my name is Brian Boyer, and I'm Now, on behalf of the church, we would like to present with, to you what's this study Bible? Now, I, I really love this uh, study Bible, and I encourage you during your journey as you, as you journey continues now that you would pull this out and use it to help guide you through your journey. In addition to the study Bible, there is a gift card from Amazon uh, that is for you uh, and for the recognition of what you've done and what you are going to do. So, this bell will have one for you. And I invite James Jones to come up at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm representing the scholarship committee from the uh, United Methodist Church. And uh, some of you um, didn't have the privilege of knowing uh, Charles and Marie Simon. They were fixtures in this church from the time I remember them as a little girl. And uh, Charles was a plumber, and he also worked for the town of Cleveland, and uh, supervising the streets and the sewers and everything that was entitled, everything that was entailed with that. Uh, after Charles passed away, Marie established a scholarship fund. And then after Marie passed, uh, sadly, uh, it has been renamed the Charles and Marie Scholarship Fund. And the scholarship fund this year is being awarded to Isabel Reynolds. Um, when you read in the, in the bulletin, of that's only a portion of her accomplishments. I want you to know that. She's a very um, ambitious young woman. And she will represent us well at uh, Purdue University. Thank you so much. That time in our worship service, we come together as the body of Christ to do what the body of Christ is called to do. And that is to do it to one another, to hold each other up, to be there in those times of needs. Uh, when, when they're in pain and hurt and sorrow, as well as their time to be there to celebrate those things that are going on in one's life. Uh, following prayer since we are praying earlier uh, by Ruth, uh, Frank continues to struggle. Uh, uh, he fell last night and he's just having a hard time uh, all around. So keep Frank back there in your prayer again for Ruth. Uh, uh, Carol Massa, Massa family, uh, we have to make some difficult decisions uh, on the last stages of life. Uh, from Linda Gordon is home. He, he then uh, had some issues, uh, uh, but he's home now recovering. But still needs to continue uh, our prayer concerns uh, as they're doing some tests uh, and understand what those tests will show. Uh, and then the Barb Fricker, her daughter, uh, Christine's mother-in-law, Nancy, diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, has had surgery, but needs prayers for recovery. Those are the prayer requests that were turned in. Uh, I mean, many of you have already asked how my wife Laura is doing. Uh, she is home. She is at the Parsonage. Uh, you know, what started out as a, a knee replacement on May 1st turned into a, a, an ordeal. Uh, she did, uh, with, and she's here at one time on a cane, uh, last, oh, two weeks ago now, I guess. Uh, woke up on Thursday with a terrible pain in the leg. 
Uh, we went into the doctor's office. Long story, maybe short, that somehow an infection got in there. She had uh, emergency surgery Saturday night and surgery again Sunday morning uh, to clean it out. She has to, she's carrying a portable IV that she has to be on the IV for uh, seven days a week, six weeks. Uh, at St. Anthony's, uh, we run in and they take it out and put it in and send it home right there five minutes. But we got that ordeal for six weeks and then six months of antibiotics. Uh, uh, she's home, she's uh, in a lot of pain, that, uh, but we turned the corner. So thank you for those prayer concerns. And uh, you know, if you want to visit, uh, certainly feel free to give her a call and, and make sure she's up for it at that time. But I have the prayer concerns and or uh, celebrations that we want to, we certainly want to celebrate all of you that are here and celebrate the, uh, the graduates, that, you know, recognizing what they've done and what they're going to do, uh, baptism, of having Joe, uh, but others. The, the mission trip, uh, we look forward to hearing from you all as you, as you return and uh, what you experienced on that time. So we look forward to uh, a report from you later on uh, on, on what that experience was like for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Grace and God, we just come to you this day, the day that we celebrate the birth of your church. God, we have this prayer that says, Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the heart of your faithful. Kindle in them the fire of your love. God, we pray that prayer this day, that you would send your Holy Spirit into this church, into this congregation, into these people, that you would instill in their hearts the fire, the love that you have for us, the love that they would then share with others. God, we give you thanks for what you've done and the lives of these people we recognize for having the gel that, and, and what you will continue to do for these graduates and the work, work that they have done, this new journey in life that they will begin. God, we pray the Holy Spirit would simply guide them, that you would give them discernment, that you would be there every step of the way, that in the times when they are celebrating and the times that they find pain and sorrow and hurt, that they would be able to turn to you and in that turning, they would find comfort to ease their pain. God, you've heard those prayer concerns that have been lifted up. We pray, your Holy Spirit, that would pour out that healing that's been requested in whatever shape or form that comes in. That you would give the people who brought these prayer requests to you an understanding of how that healing takes place. Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for our leaders at all levels of government. And we pray that you simply would guide them and give them the center and make decisions that would benefit all of mankind and not just the select few. We lift up to you, our young men and women in the armed forces. We pray that you would watch over them, that your Holy Spirit would protect them, that you would keep them from harm's way. And we lift up to you their families. Because oftentimes, separated for unknown lengths of times, not knowing whether they're in harm's way or not. We pray that during those times, God, you would surround them with your comfort and love. We lift up to you those first responders who often throw themselves into danger simply because their job is to look out and protect others. God, we know that there are unspoken prayer requests. We take just a moment for that person to lift up that prayer request to you in silence. God, we give you thanks for the blessings that you bestowed upon each and every one of us. We give you thanks for this day, this time of family coming together to celebrate whatever those celebrations are. We give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. May His Spirit guide us in all that we do. We pray these things all in his name with the word that he taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Yes, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I ask that the ushers will come forward and work with us.
Queen's mother put your little uh, new person card or the attendance in there as well as the offerings. Thank you. began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were saying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every other nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, he said, are not these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of them hears of them in our native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Thyra and Pamphylia, not good at these, Egypt and other parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some however made fun of them and said, oh, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit in all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour up my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and the signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Holy Scripture for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. My wife told me, to remember you had a baptism, you had recognition graduates. The Holy Spirit is working, they don't need to hear your voice that long. <laughs> oh God, <gotcha>. true. <laughs> I would expect no less. So it's good really, news at uh, this week's annual conference, I'll be going to the answer Sunday down annual conference. The good news for some of you is that I'm not moving. The bad news for some of you is that I'm not moving. <laughs> but we're here to talk about, I mean, cut across to me that the red, uh, to me, this, the, the church just never looks so pretty. I mean, even at Christmas time, I and mean, this church looks beautiful at Christmas time with, with all the decorations, but cut across, cut across to me, just there's something about it. It's that Holy Spirit that comes alive, that, that comes alive, not only the color. But I need to have every one of you to come to life. We come on a Sunday morning with a different set of expectations. You see, where is God moving in our life? Where is God moving in the life of this church? How is the Holy Spirit being affected today? You know, and, and, and the Holy Spirit is it, you know, it's that shy one of the Trinity. We you know, it's easy for us to talk about the Father. It's easy to talk about the Son. But when it comes to time to talk about the Holy Spirit, that becomes a little bit difficult because it's hard to tell someone what the Holy Spirit is. And, 
or to define the Holy Spirit, to, to even describe the Holy Spirit. And, you know, in the Old Testament, whenever we talk about the Holy Spirit, Gilead, we talk about the Holy Spirit as that force that, that led people into an uprising, that, that guided God's people to overthrow uh, uh, their oppressors, uh, or to prophesy. And, uh, what is the Holy Spirit and how is the Holy Spirit working in your life? And the day of Pentecost and the scripture lesson tells us, now, now I would check with Doug, I would check with Reyes back there, because maybe he read the scripture, saw all those words, and he said, I'll change it somebody. <laughs> but we're told that, that, that the Jews we gathered together in, in this day of Pentecost. It was a festival for them. It was, it was a time for them to come together, a time for them to celebrate. But we're going on this day that there was this rushing of wind. That you know, the disciples who just a few weeks earlier ran and hide, ran and, and hid as far as they could find themselves and get them away from society, afraid for themselves on this day, as this wind comes up, as, as we hear this, this talk of, of the wind and, and fire, that all of a sudden these disciples began speaking in tongues so that all the Jews that were gathered from all over the world would hear someone in their native language talking about the kingdom of God. That's what Pentecost is. The day we celebrate the life of the church. And it's that Holy Spirit working behind the scenes. Where may you find the Holy Spirit working in your life? I mean, we, we can describe the Holy Spirit in a number, number of ways. One of them, remember, Steve Martin had a phrase, right? A wild and crazy kind of guy. But we could, we could say that's the Holy Spirit, but since the Holy Spirit is, that is not supposed to be, uh, have us at a gender, we could say the Holy Spirit is just kind of a wild and crazy one. It's kind of like you may know someone. Male or female, you may know someone that you look at and say, you just don't know what they're going to do next. Yeah. You know somebody. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working with us. It just sometimes we're just afraid of what it's going to be next. Afraid of how that Holy Spirit will work in your life or in the life of the church. In, in the Gospel of John, John describe that Holy Spirit as, as, as well Jesus described and say, you know, the wind blows where it wants to, and you don't know where it came from, you don't know where it's going. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that force within you. That, that something that's deep inside you that guides your life. That helps you decide the things that you're going to do. It's the Holy Spirit that, that gives us life. I mean, that's what we celebrate is, you know, the psalmist said this. Well, in the Hebrew, if you understand in the Hebrew language, there is the same word that they use for both breath and spirit. And breath meaning life. So it's that same word that they use that says it, it's the Holy Spirit that gives us life. That, that helps decide. Not only who we are, but who are we going to become? What are we going to do? Are we going to follow what God has asked us to do? Because it's the Holy Spirit that allows us to make those choices. The Holy Spirit that says, you know what? You know what you're supposed to do, but we're not going to make it. But you have some choices. That free will, but, but it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us when we know we're going down the wrong path. It's not the 
Holy Spirit that talks to us that says, it's time to turn around. Things are not working the way that you perhaps would like them to work, or perhaps the way that God had in mind for you. It's that Holy Spirit that convicts us and makes us change, makes us want to turn around. That Holy Spirit that gives us life. That really identifies us. That allows us to think and do and say and just be. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Christ gave us that Holy Spirit. We read the stories of Jesus in the Gospels. And, and, and always there's the story of the Spirit. We sometimes forget about the story of the Spirit. And sometimes we forget it was the Holy Spirit that led Jesus into the desert to do that fashion. There's that Holy Spirit that led him into the desert to, to find himself, to understand what his calling was. To understand where God was asking him to be. It's the Holy Spirit working within you that would do the same thing. Now, you don't have to go into the desert and fast, but it's that Holy Spirit that if we rely on, if we turn to, if we listen to, it's the Holy Spirit that will guide us in the way that we're supposed to live. Now the song is put it this way. When you hide their face, they are the same. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. It's that Holy Spirit that renews us. And so we celebrate this day. We celebrate the birth of the church, but we celebrate what that birth of the church really means. And that is. You, your life. God has given you this tremendous ability, each and every one. Each and every one of you are unique. And, and, and God has designed you that way. It's that Holy Spirit that will guide you now. And yeah, there will be bumps in the road. There will be choices that we will make that won't turn out to be exactly the best choices. But it's the Holy Spirit that will say, you know, maybe it's time to do something different. Maybe it's time to listen. It's the Holy Spirit that will bring new and totally unexpected things. That will sometimes question you to say, me? Really? No, I can't do that. It's the Holy Spirit that will guide you and lead you. Because the Holy Spirit is not different. The Holy Spirit doesn't care whether you think you're capable of doing it. The Holy Spirit only wants you to know that God will be with you every step of the way. That when we call upon Him, come Holy Spirit. Fill the heart to your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. That's what this day is all about. To let that fire rage within you. To build that and to become the people that God has called you to be. Today, not only do we have all the celebrations, we have the time of celebrating Holy Communion. We celebrate knowing that God has already done. And so we take this day and we remember. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God.
and it's right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere. We give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth in the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their many him. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him, declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to announce that the time had come when you would save your people, he healed the sick. He fed the hungry. Ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. Gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this and remember it to me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you. Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out from you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembering of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is Christ will come in. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us, get it here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood and empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory. We feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us help the two come up. Now remember, this is not our table. This is the Lord's table. You do not have to be a member of this church or any other church in order to participate in the Holy Communion. You simply have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. They will take communion by two ways. Either you come up and receive the bread and get to the cup by taking, or you see the bread and go to the altar rails where there are individual cups for you. For those that need gluten-free, we'll have gluten-free and a gluten-free cup uh, over here on the other side of that for you at the years. Table is set. Come to our right. That's the same as you're able to close your hand for the spirit of the living God.
Now we said that in baptism it wasn't the water, but again, you know that this water is mixed with water that came from the Jordan River, the same river that Jesus was baptized in, the same river where the Holy Spirit descended upon him, may the Holy Spirit descend upon you this day and every day. Let the Holy Spirit, that crazy, wild thing inside you, take flight, guide you to become the people that God has asked you to be. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Go in peace. The peace of God goes with you. Amen. And amen.